preaching the marketplace now, the full gospel to the whole world. Stay tuned. In 1789, John Wesley gave us the principles of money. Earn as much as you can, save as much as you can, and give as much as you can. These principles bring prosperity, protection, and peace of mind, and assure financial success. We're making this valuable resource available without cost or obligation. To get your biblical rules of money and enjoy the blessings and rewards of financial stewardship, call 800-723-8349. That's 800-723-8349. Master's Perspective on the Marketplace Network. Sit down. Thank you for joining me. I'm so excited you're here. You're watching the Marketplace Network. And of course, this platform is uh, Pastor's Perspective. Of course, I'll be your host. I'm Dr. Ken. For the first time, I've got a real powerhouse young man pastor. It took me forever to get him on our stage here. Yes, you get to see him live. And I'm talking about live here in the uh, Orange County area where he has his own church. But this young man's very exciting. He moves in science and wonders. He's a great speaker. I'm, I'm just honored that, that, well, I'll introduce you to him. This is Pastor Colin. Thank you for joining me today. I'm so, pastor. so happy to be here today. God bless you. So I want to get into it real quickly. I want to get him to speak so you get to know him. We want to bring him on our network. It's a powerhouse. We don't have a lot of youth that are on fire like he is. So, Pastor, how did you get saved? Man, well, uh, I've been a believer now for about 16 years. Okay. Um, we'll be we'll be 30 in December, so over half my life at that point right there. Good. Right? Uh, I got invited to a church when I was a young guy. I grew up in a real dysfunctional, broken home. Oh. Uh, before I was before I was born, my biological father stepped out and oh. never got to uh, meet him in person. Talked to him a little bit in high school, but uh, you know, my whole life it was pretty much my mom and uh, my siblings. I'm the oldest of four. Oh, okay. And uh, we uh, we grew up in San Bernardino, kind oh. of in a low income area of mm -hmm. life and. A lot of different struggles, but really no gospel, no Jesus. Uh, really? In nothing? my life, nothing. No church oh attendance. I remember going to like an Easter program when I was maybe seven or eight years old. Mm -hmm. right? I remember seeing Jesus, uh, someone acting as Jesus carrying a cross. And it, it kind of sparked something in my heart. But, you know, that was, it'd be years later and that I'd actually meet Christ. Um, when my mom was, or when I was about 10 years old, my mom met a man who was uh, from Los Angeles and uh -huh. been in and out of drugs and gang trouble and stuff like that and she got married to him and uh, I had a little sister through that marriage and through that relationship but within about a year that that relationship got real toxic and got dangerous it got really uh, physically abusive oh my goodness most of that abuse wasn't geared towards my mom but it was actually geared towards me and it was a secret for a long time oh so, my goodness yeah, that's wild I didn't tell mom about it but started acting out in school started misbehaving started getting in big trouble I was maybe 12 years old or something like that. And I got to a point where, you know, life just felt like it had no purpose, it had no meaning. And I was, I remember like laying on my bed as like a 12 year old kid watching the ceiling fan in the room um, and just kind of being like, why why do I exist? Like, why am I here having these real, uh, really deep thoughts kind of going through my mind at that time. And uh, things would get progressively worse and it involved drugs and guns and all type of stuff. And I was a really young guy and just really scarred and destroyed by a lot of that abuse. Um, well, my mom found out one day we were walking through a grocery store and I, I, you know, we're going through like the frozen food section, it was just me and my mom. And I just, I started crying and my mom's like, what's wrong, honey? Like, do you not like the frozen peas like that I'm buying? Like, why, why are you upset? And I, 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 she didn't expect it. I spilled the guts of everything that was going on. I was like, this has been happening. I've been coming home with black eyes or you've been coming home from work, I have black eyes. and. Look like I've been in fights, I've been saying it's football, I've been saying I got a fight at school, but this actually has been happening behind closed doors. I haven't been going to school, I've been getting beat up at the house and stuff oh like that. Oh my goodness. And um, we ended up relocating out to the Palm Springs area. And uh, we're out in Palm Springs area doing our thing and, and trying to recover. And the world had uh, their methods of trying to help me, right? So they put yeah. me through counseling, they put me on medication, and I was angry and I was violent. and. Uh, just had no hope and no purpose. Oh, um, wow. We ended up moving to a transitional housing that was set up for low-income families that have been through abuse. 
So it was my brothers and sisters, myself and my mom, and they, uh, I, I met a family in there and they were going to a church locally and they said, hey, we go to church up the street, you should come, call VCA, I think you'd really enjoy it. And one Sunday morning, I, I went over to their house and I was just looking for purpose and I was like, hey, are you guys going to church? And they're like, no, we don't feel good and we're gonna stay home today. And so something in me just said, get up and go to the church anyway. And so I went and I walked down the street. I went to the wrong church first, uh, <laughs> but I went into a place and they, they were preaching the gospel and they, the, the message was Genesis 4. It was about Cain and Abel. And the Lord started doing something in my heart. And so I was like, whoa, that's, that's kind of interesting. It would be a couple months before I went back to that church, but eventually I did. And uh, I was invited to the youth ministry. I got invited to a summer camp and it was August 15th, 2007. The Lord radically changed my life. He delivered me from uh, depression and, and suicide and oh anger and anxiety and uh, just loneliness and feeling purposeless. Mm. The Lord delivered me like immediately. I remember up until that point for the last two years or so, I would have nightmares every time I went to sleep. Anytime I closed my eyes, I would I would have nightmares, I would have crazy dreams, I'd wake up sweating and, and frustrated and, and so scared. Sad. But the night that I got saved, I got filled with the Holy Spirit, it stopped, all right? It was instantly, wow. just that night, never the same. I remember sleeping like I felt like I'd never slept before. I felt like I hadn't slept for two years, right? And I felt the rest of the Lord. And I didn't know what it was, but the Holy Spirit is what it, what it was. You know, that's what I found Hallelujah. out later. Yeah, there was a message that God is a God that's willing to to go after you as you're lost and he has the power to, to save you and bring you back. And I remember going to that altar on that Wednesday night, going before the Lord and just saying, Lord, I don't know what you can do with me, but if you if you reveal yourself to me, if you, if you show me that you're who you are, then I'll surrender everything I have. I'll, I'll follow you wholeheartedly. And the Lord met me at that time. He met me with that promise. He filled me with the Holy Spirit. Went back to school, telling people about Jesus. And there was a there was a kid I'd gotten a really big fight with, uh, like in front of the whole school, a couple of months before that. And uh, we went back to school because this was over the summer. Uh -huh. And I saw the kid in the hallway, and I ran over to him because I wanted to tell him that Jesus saved me, and I wanted to apologize. And I, I kind of walked up and I said, "Hey, Dakota." And he turned out and he was kind of scared to see me. He's like, <gasps> and "I was like, no, 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 like, hey, man, like, I met Christ, dude. I'm so sorry." I can't believe that happened. Like, please forgive me. And he was like, okay. And then a couple months later, he, he actually started going to the Bible study that I went to. He actually gave his life to the Lord. Oh, uh, praise God. So anyway, that was uh, 2007. And here we are today. Hey, man. Isn't that a powerful testimony? Huh? You see why we waited so long to get him. Now, <laughs> Pastor, I know because of time, I want to make sure everybody gets to know you as well as I do so they sure. can get an idea of what you teach and preach and what they should expect. So what are you doing? I know you're pastor of church. Can you share a little bit about your church? Yeah. Oh, let me give you a little bit of the journey getting there. Please. We, um, so met the Lord at 13, involved in our church for five years, learning how to study the Word of God, teach the Word of God, really had a heart for youth and young adults. and. Uh, started an on-campus ministry at our school with, wow. with a very pretty girl that turned out to be my wife later on. Oh, and, the pretty girl uh, I'm looking at now? Yeah, yeah that, that one over there. Oh, there you go. Uh, so we, you know, we were doing ministry. We were serving middle school while we were in high school. We were doing high school ministry, outreaches. We'd do uh, concerts and stuff, and we did music at the time. So we would, uh, you know, do a little bit of music to try to tell people about Christ. Uh, in 2016, the Lord told me at a winter retreat that he was calling me to the ministry. He was calling me to be a youth pastor. And um, so right after high school, 20, wow. 2012, mm -hmm. I might've given me the wrong dates. That was 2010, I, I heard that from the Lord. But in 2012, two years later, we uh, went off to go to school. My wife went to Vanguard University Ooh. out here in Orange County. Yeah. I went to Calvary Chapel Bible College and then went off to go get a, a music degree afterwards. And in 2014, we were serving at a church for a couple years out here. And they asked me to step on as a youth pastor. We were already serving the youth ministry, just uh, assisting the previous pastor. And they all retired and kind of moved on and went off to do different things. And so we took over the youth ministry in 2014. Okay. And we served in that ministry till 2020. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and then we saw God do a really powerful work, small but mighty. You know, it was a really awesome group. And when I recall those memories and those years, I think those were some of the greatest years of our, our ministry to the youth. You know? Okay. Uh, so, fast forward in 2022, 
2002, I get a call from that church. We had moved away. God called us to go back to where our family was and serve uh, at our home church where we got saved at. And I got a call and they said, hey, would you consider stepping in and serving in the ministry uh, as the head pastor at this church that we had served as the youth pastors in before? And after prayer and kind of deliberation, just saying, Lord, you got you to gotta tell us for sure. Uh, he absolutely did. He gave my, my wife an amazing word and he gave oh, hey, uh, me a handful of different signs that he was calling us to go back. And we're like, Lord, we're young, the church is older, we're unqualified. Um, how do we know that this, you know, how do we know that it's going to be in the right place for us? And uh, you know, we had an opportunity through a friend who pastors at a convalescent home. He, he got really sick and he said, hey, I, I need someone to cover and preach for me for a few weeks. And this was right before we made our decision to move out here. Uh -huh. And the people in the convalescent home were maybe 80, 80 and up or 80 years old and up. Okay. And uh, we went there for a couple of weeks and loved those people and teach and taught the gospel to them and just encouraged them. And like the amount of love and support we got from them was one of the Lord's signs of saying, hey, you're ready to go and minister beyond high schoolers, beyond young yeah, adults. We're calling you to a bigger place in ministry, uh, a bigger position in, in ministry. And so we said yes to the call. So we've been at this church for just a couple months now. Uh, the Lord has been growing the church. We've seen uh, people come and, and are ready to get baptized and give their lives to Jesus. And we've kind of expanded in numbers and we're in, introducing new programs and things like that. And it's, it's going wonderful. Praise the Lord. Yeah. I've been there. I can testify with that. It's a powerful, he's done a powerful work. He's a great teacher. I want to inspire him to go further with us here to help you, the viewer, to learn more about who Christ is and what Christ has done for you. That's good. So, look, just like the fishermen, the apostles, they were young kids. I mean, uh, I would guess that John, the apostle John was maybe 15, 14, yeah. and he stepped into his ministry. And yeah. He was the one that uh, everybody got martyred, but he's the one that lived the old lifestyle at the end. Yeah. And his ministry was love. It was so interesting. He said, are you losing it, Apostle John? And he says, no, when you get my message of love, I'll stop preaching it. <laughs> Something to think about. Uh, so what's going on now? Well, how do you see from your eyes? What is God showing you? Can you share with our viewers what that is? Sure. Yeah, so about a year and a half ago, uh -huh. I've been, I started going through this journey of understanding and unpacking what Jesus meant when he came to talk about the kingdom of God. Okay. Right? Many times I've read through the gospels and you see the phrase, the kingdom of God, the yeah, kingdom, yeah, of, yeah. God, oh, the yeah, kingdom yeah. of God, and you're Tell like, us. what is that? You know, most of the time, I don't think we even think about it. No, no, no. I think no, we okay. say, oh, Jesus died, resurrected, and yeah. that's the kingdom yeah, of yeah, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I thought. Absolutely. But I'm, I would argue to say it's a little bit more. Good right? for you. I would argue to say that there's a lot more to this idea of the okay. kingdom of God. Um, Jesus didn't call the church by the Old Testament name church. Uh, the Old Testament name kind of had to do with the building, had this idea of being a house, right? Ooh, that's good. Um, Teach that. Kirk is the, like the abbreviation of it or how the short version of it in the Hebrew. But in the New Testament, it uses a different word, ecclesia. Okay. And the word ecclesia is a Greek word that's actually a, a military term, in a sense. Ooh, really? Okay. So what they would do is, as Rome was taking over different areas, uh -huh. they would establish a group of leaders in a town. Uh, as they would approach a town, they'd say, hey, look, you got a choice. You can either come and uh, join Rome and become a city-state of ours, become an extension of the kingdom of Rome, or we can just decimate you and destroy you. Mm. So most people chose the first option. They yeah, said, okay, so. we'll follow you. Okay, what do you guys want? All right, they didn't want to, they didn't want to fight against it. Okay. And that word uh, is the word of a group of leaders that were called to pretty much meet with a, with a herald, with somebody that would come from Rome as a representative. He would tell them, hey, this is what we're doing. These are what you guys need to impart in your city. This is what the king wants. Okay. And all you have to do is you guys have to go out and make this happen. Right, this group of leaders. They were okay. called out of their houses and they were sent back to change their community. So Jesus used this word to explain the New Testament church. Okay. You, the New Testament church is not a building, but now that the Holy Spirit dwells in the hearts of people. Ooh, that's good. Okay. The people are the church. Okay. Now, I'm not talking about I'm the church while I stay at home. I actually don't submit to a church leader. Ooh, did you hear that? Say um, that again. I'm the wow. church while I stay home and have this inclusive Christianity that 
uh, doesn't get Did sharpened that? by Write others. That down. Yeah, I don't good. pour into other people, right? I'm, it's just me, me, Christian. We're not the church by ourselves, but as we join together, we're like that group of elect. Good work. Those ambassadors mm -hmm. that receive the news of the king and then go and implement that news to the nations. Right? Good work. Wow. So we come, we gather, we get built up, but the primary reason is to be sent out and to share the news of Jesus to the world around us. Yes. We are the ecclesia, right? And so that's really how I've seen the church. Um, understanding Jesus as king changes my perspective of life. Because a citizen of a kingdom, uh -huh. they live under the laws of the king. They live under the goodness of the king. I just finished a series through Nehemiah at the church. That was powerful. I heard that. Go ahead. And Nehemiah was sent out by King Artaxerxes to go and to fulfill this desire that was on his heart. And it's a picture of, the, of us today, right? The church is a group of people oh, that's so true. that are sent out mm -hmm. by the king. Mm -hmm. And not only sent out by the king, but that means the provision of the king was on Nehemiah's life. Okay. That provision is on our lives. Okay. Uh, the protection of the king was over Nehemiah as he traveled. That's a good word right there. Uh -huh. The protection of King Jesus is on our life. And so understanding everything from the kingdom perspective, I've been going through the gospels, uh, things make sense to me now. It's like, oh, we're called to be ambassadors. Yes. We're, we're, we're foreigners. We live in this land. Yeah. But our allegiance isn't to our nation, isn't to our culture, our ethnicity. It's not even to our, like, our families in a sense. It's first to the king. And then all other things fall together. What does Matthew, what does Jesus say in Matthew 6.33, right? Seek yeah. first the kingdom of God. And all these other things will be taken care of. That's good. And so for the church, those are our, our pillars. Those are our, uh, that's our statement of faith, right? We're to be a kingdom people that seek first the kingdom of God, building okay. his kingdom. Second of all, I believe the family is a huge, uh, huge entity that the kingdom of God has brought through. Ooh. Without that's strong good. families, you don't have strong churches. That's Without good. strong families, you don't have strong nations, right? Everything happens locally at the family. And so God has called us to build the family. We live in a day and age where Mascul masculinity and men are being called Write that down. to live in a weak way, right? Where the idea of having any type of hi hierarchy in a family, any type of uh, strong male presence is really kind of looked down upon. The statistics show, and I come from this, so it's it hits home for me, man, because I come from fatherless homes, right? But the statistics show that when dad's not in the, in the family, when he's not uh, at home, the numbers of kids that go off to go and be in jail or uh, get arrested for things or uh, end up on drugs is through the roof, right? My wife shared a statistic the other day uh, and mom and dad, husband and wife have both unique roles in the family and they're both equal. Good work. But they're different, uh -huh. right? My, my steering wheels are different than my brakes yes. in my car, but they're both needed for my car to function. That's right. But my wife shared a statistic that she came across and I'm gonna butcher it a little bit. I, I didn't plan to share it. Okay. But, Sorry. She said something along the lines. We'll get of, around and say that. Yeah, she said something along the lines as uh, they did studies that women that go to church and and uh, have children, their kids are like twenty percent likely to be followers of Christ if the if the if the husband doesn't go to church, but the wife does. Really? But if the husband leads the family in going to church and walking with Jesus, yeah. the statistics say like ninety five percent of those kids is that a fact? Wow, in good the faith. work. Okay, so. Our church, this idea of building the family is, is huge, right? I have a huge ministry to say, man, we need to we need to step up. We need to learn what it means to love sacrif sacrificially, to live in uh, this this uh, loving leadership model that Jesus brought us. We're called to resemble Him, and I think we have a high a high calling. And I want to empower the family. I want to see young people learn what it is to to experience Jesus and and walk in His gifts at a young age. Uh, women to to find their calling and their their uh, position in, in life and what God's calling them to do and in their family and then the last part of our church building the kingdom is one building the family is two lastly is building the community and that's really based on wow. the book of Acts chapter two the early church what did they look like yeah right? in that's America really good. in America we uh, we're all about the white picket fence in the house. Yeah. And, and like our lives exist in this small bubble right here yeah. and the community in a, like its truest sense is, is maybe missing here and even in the church, you know, yeah. we call people in the church, our family, and then we don't share things going on. We don't help each other in times of need. And 
you know, if that's your family, that, that's, I don't want to be a part of that family personally, yeah. right? Yeah. So I think we're, we need to have church be a unique place where the community of God exists. Yes. And it actually looks like the community of God from the book of Acts. Wow. That's where we get all of our information from, right? They sold everything they had. That's they really helped good. each other. They gave to one another. They supported each other. They they really banded together. Other cultures around the world that are more communal, like they understand this. They go to church, then they spend six hours with the people after church together, right? That's good. Most of the time we get to church and we're like, I want to get out of here. I got lunch plans with <laughs> you know with someone else that's not at church. You know? Yes, amen. And it's just not always a true community. So we're like, Lord, bring us to this point, because only the Lord can do it. Bring us yeah. to this point where we're a real community of faith. Building the kingdom, building the family, building the community. That's our church. That's what we're trying to focus on. Powerful. Yeah, I've heard all kinds of statistics. If we just started with the family, all these things wouldn't be going on wars and so on. If we just started the home level, that's a powerful message, Pastor. As because of time, I want to turn you loose. And if you had, I'd, I'd like you to pray for the people. There are so many people are really just hopeless. Hmm. Um, some because of the insurance is so high is struggling with health right. and we always like to talk about the relationship their health and of course finances and of course you have the mantle of finances maybe they're struggling with their finances I don't know where the Lord is leading you but can you speak into that camera and really you want to teach a little something or you just want to pray for them please take your liberty yeah yeah uh, well, I would start to say that you got to remember who owns the cattle right amen you got to remember who, who our provider is and uh, the good news about the kingdom when you understand it the, the king is, is wealthy in the kingdom right Ooh, he and is. all the all the uh, wealth is allocated to him and all the resources go through him who you are in the kingdom yeah. depends on who the king says you are amen and who the good news that? about king jesus is that he calls us his children right he calls us his i got two little kids we got one on the way and um sometimes <laughs> if we wake up kind of in a hurry, you know, my, my little son will be running around in his PJs and you can see his little saggy diaper and stuff like that, oh, you know, so from, and my wife will stop me and say, wait, 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 we got to change the way he looks because he, we can't, he can't be running around like this. That's our son, right? Yeah. Change the diaper, Good let's Lord. get him fed, it's going to take care of my friend. You and I are, are children of God. He calls us that, right? He adopts us and even arguably the greatest love of his adoption, like, bring it in somebody that doesn't belong to you biologically. Ooh, that's good. Yes, but I bring yes, you into the family yes. and I give you all the benefits of, of my family. With that being said, God cares about how you are. He cares about uh, your well-being. He, he wants to meet your needs. He wants to provide for you. And he's the king, so he has the power to do it. Matthew 6, 33, seek first the kingdom, right? Okay. You seek first God's kingdom. Everything else will be provided. He was talking about what? He was talking about people saying, how am I going to eat tomorrow? What am I going to wear tomorrow? And Jesus says, I got that taken care of. You just keep your eyes on the focus. Right? Powerful, powerful word. You've heard it. Now I want you, his lower thirds you see right here on screen. If you have any prayer requests or if you want to actually come to his church, please email him at that address. He's very personal. He will get back to you. What's the, where's the church at? What does the church start? At? Sure, we're in uh, Westminster, California. <laughs> most beautiful city in Orange County. Yes, definitely. And uh, we are, we're meeting on Sunday mornings at 10.30 right now. That's and you have a service on Wednesday? And we have a midweek service, Bible study, seven o'clock on Wednesdays. And that's a, that's a great time, man. We've, we've been diving through the word there, just verse by verse. Ooh. Dissecting it together. He is a great teacher. I would invite you to say, I saw you on whatever platform you saw him on. I wanted to come meet you. I wanted to hear the word. Will you pray for me? He will. So please come and join him. I want to wrap this up by saying this. Uh, I'm really honored to have him up here on our set. Uh, you know how we do it at Pastor's Perspective. We look for the pastor that's feeding and really teaching something for people that are truly hungry. And I know there's a lot of people out there are lost and really have needs. It's time for us as ministers to really minister that need to you to help you look forward to what Christ has for you. Yeah. Until next time, I'm Dr. Kent. Of course, the great Pastor Colin. We'll see you next time on Pastor's Perspective. Pastor's Perspective on the Marketplace Network.